Simon, all right, crisis is just beginning. What do you mean? I mean, Erin, very simply, that we now have a financial system that's completely based on moral hazard. Too big to fail. All the big banks left standing believe that they are immune from any uh, future failure because uh, that's what happened in the last year. That's what Tim Guyton has told them. That's what Larry Summers has told them. And crazy things happen when you have a financial system like that. So what kinds of things might happen soon? I mean, all the bankers have come out. I mean, just what was it, a couple of days ago, Brian uh, Moynihan, the new CEO of Bank of America, said, hey, we're worried about the economy, all that sort of stuff. But the crisis definitively in the rearview mirror. Wrong? Uh, definitely wrong. Really fascinating that this is their, their psychology. Uh, we're looking at emerging markets, and I think this is the next frontier for, for the crisis. Mm. You, there's a great carry trade, obviously, with cheap funding uh, from the U.S. The, the Fed is incredibly dovish, and that's not going to change. Money coming out of the U.S. or round-tripping through the U.S. from emerging markets, from rich people in Kazakhstan to the U.S., out to emerging market, maybe a Chinese, Brazilian investment. You're going to see a lot of frothiness. Now, the conventional wisdom is you can't have back-to-back -back major financial crises. I think we're going, to, we're going to push that. We're going to have a look and see whether that's true. The next 12 months could really be exciting. People could be very positive, but we are setting ourselves up for an enormous catastrophe. Oh, man. Here we go again. Isn't there anybody who comes on this show and doesn't see storm clouds on the horizon? What kind of catastrophe? Oh, what kind of catastrophe would you like? Look, your entire financial system, all the big players right now, the six, six yeah. major banks in the United States, their total balance sheet is over 60% of U.S. GDP. It got bigger during the crisis. All the big guys are, are out there looking to take risk. So, so would you, so would I, if we felt we were immune. If we had a get-out-of-jail-free card, wouldn't you, go, wouldn't you go take a lot of risks right now? Of course you would. Where do you take the risk? Well, it could be commodities, could be crazy things in the United States. I think, though, mostly it's going to be where everyone is sure the prices can only go up, and that's China, that's other emerging markets. Oh, a crisis in China, that would be a pretty terrifying thing. Now, Simon, what, what is your image of what a crisis in China would be right now? Well, that, 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 that's, that's a great question. China is obviously so hard uh, to read, and so many, you know, uh, mirrors behind mirrors. But I think, you know, we've been more of a Japan-type scenario. Uh, Japan, of but course, had a big, massive run-up in real estate. Everyone in, 19, in 1989 was convinced that Japan was going to be number one. Right. We're going to hear a lot about China as number one. And then you have a massive crash. You, you have a lot of savings. You ha always had a lot of savings in Japan. You'll always have a lot of savings in, in China, yeah. right? It doesn't have the same external crisis that we associate, say, with the 1990s, but it can have a massive banking crisis, and you can have a, a, a really dismal performance for, for the real economy and all kinds of interesting exchange rate dynamics that are really going to impact the rest of the world, All right, too. Dave, David Faber wants to get in here for just, but before he does, I just want to, as long as we're talking about China, I mean, they have let their currency drift. They haven't let it adjust fully, but they have let it move. And uh, just today or yesterday, they started raising rates. So doesn't that indicate China's aware of how things can get out of hand and they're trying to tap on the brakes? They're a little bit aware of it. They're, yeah, they're tapping on okay. the brakes, but they're heading, they're going 100 miles an hour into a massive pileup. Tapping the brakes is not Boy, going to do it. Boy, you're just a ray of sunshine, <laughs> David. <laughs> yes. yes, Simon, I want to come back to you on a statement you made earlier saying that the banks are taking on more risk and they have more assets or, or their balance sheets are bigger than ever. I, I don't see that. I mean, uh, most lending is down. Balance sheets are actually smaller. Leverage ratios are way down. And, you know, it's still not that easy to get a big company to, to uh, a big bank to make a commitment to you uh, anywhere near the way they did in 05, 06, and even 07. So what are you talking about? Well, you just, look, just look at the numbers, the, the latest numbers we have uh, through the end of the third quarter and what we're going to see in the fourth quarter. The banks obviously are being tight on the lending. Uh, Jamie Dimon made a great statement about, about this to the Goldman Sachs uh, Investor Conference recently. I'm, I'm sure, you, sure you heard that. They're being tight on the lending, but they, they, they see great opportunities in, in markets, in over-the-counter derivatives, for example, in all kinds of foreign exchange operations. They are taking a lot of risk. Now, if they, they may tell you they're not, that may, I think, just speaks to the fact they don't understand the risk they're getting into. The meeting being held today by the Bank for International Settlements in, in, in Basel is exactly a confirmation of the point that I'm making. The officials are worried, but they don't know what to do about it because they've allowed them to become, the banks to become too big to fail. They're really in a hard spot. They don't want to raise rates right now, but they see the banks acting, beginning to act in a seriously irresponsible manner. What are they going to do? They should break up the big banks, but they don't have the political goal to do that right now. All right, Simon, thank you very much.